Morning guys, uh, lots happening today. We start uh, plumbing and electrical rough in. We got uh, row mechanical. You guys remember Connor Rowe? <laughs> Alicia almost made it to shore. <laughs> right on. <laughs> yeah, same guy. Anyways, um, me and Mrs. Austin went on a little mission last night <clears throat> to a local sawmill. We got some really cool 6 by 8s um, There's going to be a, a 10 foot wide and it comes out 5 feet like a kind of a covered entrance. Uh, for the front door so they just kind of had it uh, drawn up with uh, just normal uh, two by sixes or whatever so we thought this would give a really nice look so we picked up some really cool timbers for a really nice price and we got a whole tour of the they got all kinds of cool stuff out there they got an old truck covered in wood and that stuff so they gave us a whole tour out there it was really cool last night So the framers are still going hard. Uh, they finished up the, f uh, the roof on the covered patio yesterday. They got a little bit of more on the walls to do, but uh, they're almost, uh, almost done what they can do until we get the floors poured. And then they got some interior framing to do in the living quarters. So they might be taking a break for a week or two and then having to come back and finish. And uh, there's two rooms here that gotta get framed out. And then the stairs go to a landing and then the stairs go up um, to finish off going up to the second level. So we got some uh, floor drains going in into both uh, the attached garage and the shop. There should be a couple going in the shop just so we can manage melting snow and if we want to wash our vehicles inside. Hey buddy! Oh yeah. So that's cool. So obviously there's going to be a bunch of plumbing that's got to go in the living quarters and then there's one more drain that's got to go into the attached garage. So, and then we got to figure out, uh, I think we figure out a place for our septic tank off that back corner. And then we'll have a pump off that goes uh, back past that. So what's really nice about being out in the country is you can have a septic pump off. Um, so all your gray water gets pumped off. So you only get your septic pump probably once a year, or once every two years. Whereas at the lake, everything goes into your septic, all your gray water, everything. So. For us, it's usually about uh, two to three weeks you get pumped, so you don't even make it a month without needing to get pumped out. So, so it'll be pretty nice out in the country where you can just pump off all your gray water. And gray water too, man. If you ever see a septic mound, the grass and, and plants are so green and so tall around the septic mound. So it's uh, obviously environmentally friendly. So yeah, man, freaking exciting day. Like I said, you know, teeny bit stressful, just trying to, you're just trying to make sure that you're, you're making all the right calls, right? This is our first time doing anything like this. So a guy just wants to, you know, place everything as best you can so that everything works the way you thought it, think it should. So tiny little bit of extra planning, hopefully, and everything will be hunky-dory. Oh, the little mini hose coming in. So this is what we're gonna be using to uh, dig down for the septic lines, for the lines coming in from the well, some of that's got to go down eight feet. So, so we got our old buddy George here. He's uh, doing all the mini hoe work today. So they're basically now just digging the trench for the water line to come from the well. So basically, you got to dig down below the frost line. So they're going to try to go down ten feet, and then uh, they'll have to dig on the inside of the shop. Um, and basically, the water line will just go underneath the footing into the shop there. 
So we're gonna shoot straight back and we got the, where the well is marked out where we're gonna dig the well just back there. So he's gonna do basically just a straight shot right back there. This uh, whole uh, hill is like digging in a giant sandbox. Super easy digging. And it's got just enough clay where everything remains stable. Nothing's caving in or anything, so good stuff. We had to put a, <laughs> put a chunk of uh, sheeting over the door so no one stepped out of that door and fell 10 feet down. So we're all about safety here on this build. Okay, boys, I'm gonna try not to cry here, but so our son is in his fourth year electrical apprenticeship and we hired his company to do our electrical. So isn't that awesome? <laughs> There's Austin Jr. <laughs> Hauling in some conduit. Proud of that kid. <laughs> they're getting married next month, you guys. In August, they're getting married. So him and his fiance have been together for a few years. She's a really, really great gal. She's a nurse. So proud of this freaking guy. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we got electrical going today, like I said, plumbing going today. We're just marking, uh, so we want an outside tap here. So he's gonna uh, run some freeze-proof taps, which basically um, the valve just comes into the garage and it shuts off back here and then drains out so you never have to winterize those taps in the winter. You, you, you can still use them in the winter because we're gonna run a hot and cold to this corner. So basically, if you want to use your gas pressure washer or whatever, or fill up the trailer, because right around here is where we have our trailer parking. This is where we'll have our big lean-to. We'll have a roof here, and our trailer parking will be right here. So we'll have some water right here, and then we'll end up running an air line. So you got air back here. So you need a tire filled or whatever, you got air back here. So, so yeah. So And then they're just figuring out uh, for the water, for the... Uh, car wash bay so like I said lots of stuff to uh, plan out and and like I said you just don't want to make a mistake and and regret you know oh we should have did this or we should have did that so you got to try to think everything is this the not so glorious side of plumbing yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. <laughs> totally yeah yeah, like, well, at least the ground's not too it's concrete. Nice oh, awesome. So, yeah, so at least at least they got that going for it. Sometimes you get packed clay and it's like trying to dig through asphalt. <laughs> that too, yeah. Totally. So, yeah, basically all the plumbing rough-ins. Got to get all pre-dug and laid in before the concrete floors go, so. Right on. Okay, guys, we just had to run to town to pick up a few more items we needed and <laughs> they almost got all the drainage done. Connor figures it'll be done today, so it makes a big difference having a, a operator here and then Connor doesn't have to operate the little mini hoe. So it makes short work of all these trenches they need dug. So we switched up with what we're doing for floor drains for the wash bay and for the main part of the shop we went with these uh, larger fiberglass drains with a, a pit for all the sand to go so you'll just get the water going into your septic tank and not a bunch of trash so it's kind of got a like a gravel trap in them and got a nice grate so one of those will go in the middle of the wash bay and one will go in the middle of the 16 foot door opening will slope accordingly like I said I'm not sure how far out 10 feet out or whatever he'll slope two inches down so we'll get a, a decent slope so everything runs down into the drain and then those drains have to be hooked up and they go out to that septic tank and then when that's full you get that sucker pumped out so so yeah that's a big pile of dirt Framers are still going crazy. Finishing up this back wall. I guess with a building this tall, these uh, man lifts are freaking invaluable. Beats going up and down on a ladder a hundred times. Much safer. Can bring a bunch of stuff up with you. We'll go check out the living quarters. All right, so George is all done digging the pit for our well line. 
beauty. So that'll go right in there underneath the footing. And then me and Mrs. Asta, <laughs> she changed some stuff on the plan. So that's not including the quotes. So we're just digging in some trenches for some drains and water lines for the uh, this patio area. So there'll be counters here with the sink and stuff. And then on that side, I think, on that side will be like the barbecue and smoker and stuff. Yeah, oh yeah, you got her through. Yep. So yeah, so basically just a few little trenches to run some water lines that are, we'll basically have to winterize in the winter because this room won't be running water in the winter. And then we dug another one so we could have a water uh, tap on the front of the house for watering flowers or whatever. So, and they're just kind of finishing up, putting the, all the rest of the drains in here. We punched under the footing there too to go into the mechanical room. We just gotta take a couple two by twos out that are in the way. Here's just a real quick overview of what's happening today. Putting all the drain lines in and water lines in. So, we got freaking trenches like crazy. Just wait, wait till you see this one out here. So, and then the ele electrical panel will be on the outside wall there, so the main electrical cord's gonna go through that one into the utility room. They're just starting to backfill this trench out here. Dang, I don't think I can get to it from this side. Hang on. Okay, so this is our well water lines, three quarter inch, 10 feet down. So George is just backfilling it now. So it'll go in under the footing there. Sweet. Okay guys, here's current situation. It poured last night. So that truck's not stuck, but it's pretty stopped. That van is stuck. There's another truck behind mine. Mine is behind that tree. I was supposed to get in here to take funds and close trailer back today. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna happen. <laughs> But anyways, everyone's cruising along, doing the best. And uh, I gotta start backfilling with the Bobcat. Start backfilling. The um, septic inspector came out today, or health and safety, whatever. He came out today, inspected everything. He said everything looks really great. So we're okay to go for backfill. So that huge mound of dirt, boom, in here. So we'll hop in the Bobcat and start moving some dirt. And then we pray that it doesn't rain anymore today and that we can get all those vehicles unstuck. <laughs> oh, bit of a crap show, but you know, if life was too easy, it would start to get boring. So no big deal, we can handle it. Sorry boys, I'm a little out of breath. So I'm doing the backfill. I got this, most of this giant pile filled in here. So now I'm just hand shoveling underneath the footing and then packing it really tight, as tight as I can with my foot just to make sure that we get we get that filled all the way under the footing and packed in tight, tight as we can anyways. If a guy was just to come in here with the Bobcat and just dump a load in, you know, the load would come down here and it wouldn't get packed in, pushed in as much as you can. So this is about the 10th time I threw a couple shovelfuls and then pushed it in with my foot just to make sure that's we got good stable ground underneath that footing. Basically anywhere where we had to go under, I'll do a little bit more there too. But everything's going really good. This was the, the really deep uh, trench here, the deepest part, so, so everything's going really decent. I really wish I brought my GoPro. We could have set her up in the corner there and put her on time lapse. And then brrr, all these piles would be gone. <laughs> But yeah, anyways, she's going good, so we're gonna keep keep giving her. Okay guys, I learned to try to do pans a little slower so everyone didn't get sick watching the videos. Okay, so everything's going really good. We got this main trench. It was basically all the way through here. We got that all filled in. We got the start of this one filled in. I know it's not, <laughs> it's not beautiful, but <laughs> I can smooth that out later. So we're just working on this trench here. We got about it three quarters of the way done. 
and then that trench in the back and then all our dirt will be gone so everything's going really good the sheeting on the roof really helped with the rain it probably kept 90 percent of the rain out so we're only dealing with with a little bit of mud so thank god otherwise this freaking thing would be getting stuck i took the chains off it's pretty much useless without the chains in mud and snow so it would have been tough going so yeah this is pretty deep the trench has got to get filled as well so i'll do the same thing with that under the footing there i'll put some fill in and i'll pack it pack it put some fill in pack it pack it stomp it so it gets really tightly packed underneath that footing just so it gives it the same support hopefully the same support it had so these floor drains look freaking awesome so basically all the all the floor is going to be sloped slope to these drains this one's right in the center of the 16 foot and then this one's in the center of this 10 foot which will be our wash bay so yeah these uh, drains were really pricey the plastic ones Connor had the big ones were like 80 bucks these are like 450 bucks but they got an actual uh, sand trap and stuff so hopefully it'll keep a lot of junk out of our septic tank so a guy can just reach in there and scoop out with a shovel or sh suck it out with a shop vac but for the most part in the in the summer especially in the summer spring and fall we're gonna have a large uh, apron back here and basically we'll be washing everything that's super full of skag and crap we're gonna be washing it all outside anyways so that should keep the majority of junk out of those out of those drains everything can get washed out here fall out here and then a guy could just scoop it up with a bobcat bucket and then just dump it wherever it's basically God's fertilizer muskeg so yeah, look at that, the sun is peeking out again. Woohoo! Just barely, but just enough. I really hope it just doesn't, this rain just goes right around us for the rest of the day. That would be just awesome. To the north, it looks good. East doesn't look so good. South doesn't look so good. And I don't think west looks very good. Most of our weather comes from the west. So we'll take a quick look at what it looks like out to the west here. Eh, kind of a mix half and half not too too brooding so maybe we'll get lucky today so all right let's keep on trucking That's pretty much it for plumbing rough in basically day and a half these guys freaking knocked it out this is uh master bathroom and the other bathroom and then basically all the kitchen and then like i said we put a couple lines into the patio uh, water lines and drain lines and then big drain lines out in the shop and some water lines as well we got water lines going from there, coming out there for the wash bay, and then to a hot and cold going to that corner too for pressure washing or, or filling the trailer or whatever. So don't, uh, don't, don't cut down my level job too bad. <laughs> I said I'm just a Bobcat owner, not an operator, but I got the holes filled in so I feel accomplished. So, but yeah, everything freaking turned out good. Connor, Row and he owns Roe Mechanical, he brought a few workers here and they crushed this in like a day and a half. I said they freaking did such good work. So now they gotta wait till uh, Sunday. We're gonna come and lay all the um, Nudera hydrofoam. It's the two and a half inch styrofoam that goes underneath the heated pad. We're gonna lay all that and then Monday they're gonna come back and they're gonna lay all the PEX heat lines. And then rebar and then freaking concrete. So. Next week, that's gonna be freaking exciting, man. We're gonna pour this giant slab and then slab in the patio, slab in the living quarters and slab in the attached garage. So lots and lots of concrete. <laughs> all in all, freaking awesome, awesome work. Hats off to Connor and crew. They did such a good job. Like I said, super quick, super easy to work with and uh, awesome um, to George Carruthers also. He was running the mini hoe out here for the big trench and stuff. He's freaking awesome, man. He's getting up there in age and he's still just such a great operator. So smooth, nice and quick. Those Carruthers, man, they're, 
like I said, we've used them lots in the past and they're always really, really great price and they do great work. So if we ever need them again, no hesitation to call them back again. So right on. All right, just when you thought things were over, I'm not even pulling them. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, so if we end up getting stuck, we can get the teller handler in to give us a hand, so. We'll uh, try to smash through. We're gonna go straight, straight up that hill and then come in on the grass. So he probably thinks I need a tow, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go a different way. All right, ready, set, let's go. Later, boys. <laughs> that probably looked pretty good from the outside. <laughs> okay, so then we just come in right here and it's freaking gorgeous. Oh, as we skid by. It's coming in the back door. Hook up that trailer and then try to take it out the same way. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, guys, we're gonna try to do the same thing. Nice straight shot, but now we got a 34 foot trailer behind us. <laughs> Oh, so like I said, it's not a humongous deal if we get stuck. They got the telehandler there, the zoom boom. So we're gonna just try to give her a little snot here and see if we can make her out. Biggest thing is not, to not get too sideways and end up in that creek. in that creek oh, come on you dick oh, well we're winching now <laughs> dang it just needed to stay a little bit more to the right now we got a giant anchor behind us but we'll winch we'll be okay yeah, she's a little greasy. It was a little hard to kind of stay up on the crown of the road. So we got into the real soft stuff here. But thank God that little bank was there because <laughs> we got real, <laughs> real trouble here. So that should keep those wheels there. We'll just winch up across the road and uh, hopefully we'll be good. I'm embarrassed to say I've used this winch more times than <laughs> Then I probably should have, but guys gotta do what guys gotta do. <laughs> See if we can do everything at once here. Drive, winch. Try not to get the cable into the wheel. Trying to get to the center of the road. Okay, I think I got her. I'll uh, unhook the winch and we'll try some throttle. <laughs> okay, I think we got her. We were, uh, we got basically the trailer past that big hill and we're headed up the right way so these freaking KM3s are actually pretty decent once you get the tread blocks cleaned out so we should be able to chew up there no problem. So thank god this trailer is empty I don't think we could have done it with any more weight <laughs> but you can <laughs> kind of see where we had to get through here but we should be all good now. 
Oh yeah. Easy, easy. Got her boys. Woohoo! Some random doggo. <laughs> Never seen that dog before. Yeah, might as well piss, why not? <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're just uh, getting these trenches done to run uh, the main um, power supply will come on the exterior wall there. So it'll come um, under the wall there. And then uh, basically the, what gauge cable would come from there to the utility room? What's the cable? Uh, oh, uh, so supply cable, like super thick stuff will go into the utility room. Yeah, <laughs> he just took a piss over there. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, the cable will go over there and and uh, the main breaker box will be like in the utility room there. So so we had to dig trench to there and then a trench because Mrs. Osta wants a, like a kind of woodworking room on the outside of the wall. So we trenched back that way. And then the only other thing that really has to get trenched in is the power for the island. The kitchen island because it'll have a carburetor and a couple plug-ins so we trenched uh to bring a power line to there too other than that everything else just goes in the walls so just a few things that had to get trenched in so got that all dug they can lay all that and then and then we start prepping for concrete so afternoon guys it's sunday uh me and mrs Osta just came out to do a couple quick things it's a day off for everyone, thank God. Everyone probably needs it. So we got our uh, Nudera Hydrofoam delivered. So this is the rigid insulation that goes underneath our heated slab. And uh, then our, uh, I think it's 5 8 inch PEX pipe. Um, that Nudera has got a very uh, specific profile that uh, the 5 8 inch PEX pipe fits in and, and gives you really nice, it sits down kind of in a channel. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, once the rebar goes on, the rebar is not going to be sitting on the PEX pipe. It'll be sitting on the top of that foam. And so we just came today to mark out uh, where we're going to put our reinforcement pads for our two post lift. So basically we're going to put a 36 inch um, extra, like probably another six inches deep. So we'll have 12 inches of concrete where the feet of the two post lift are going to go. So we got that measured out. So basically this doorway It'll be kind of a combo doorway. You'll be able to pull in if you need the lift or else the arms can swing out of the way and you can just use it as a normal doorway if you need to pull up further. And then we kind of measured out from where we wanted our slope to start uh, for our floor drain. So we went 12 feet back uh, from the floor drain. And then I believe it's 12 feet from the front of the floor drain to the door. So we've got 24 feet of area where it'll be sloped down two inches. So any machine you pull in, say in the winter, any machine you pull in in that 24 feet will melt off and go down that drain and then into its own uh, septic tank, a sealed septic tank. And then we'll go 12, 12 feet from that one over there. That'll be the pressure wash bay. So that's gonna be actually be a, a covered structure, a framed in structure. So it'll be, it'll keep all the humidity and stuff enclosed in that room. So that'll be mainly for, you know, the machines, um, especially in the winter. In the summer, we'll do most of the pressure washing outside, so all the extra muskeg and all that junk. Okay. <laughs> Where did you find that part at? Oh, uh, you should whack it. I don't it. understand why they sit so high on the head. That one looks extra high. Yeah. You should whack it with the sledgehammer. Oh, we're going to. Got him. Got him. <laughs> So yeah, just a couple little little things. Uh, I worked midnights last night, so slept for a few hours and came out and just uh, marking a few things. Tomorrow morning, um, our concrete prep starts. So um, here's the still the open channels from the power rough in. So all that will get filled. Um, this whole area will be filled, leveled, and tamped, and then bring in uh, other tamping material um, so that we can easily uh, create that slope. The slope, interesting enough, has to be done in your substrate. You can't just try to slope your concrete because then you'll get thin spots and thick spots in your concrete. So the slope's actually done in your in your concrete prep. So once everything's done, we we lay the we lay some poly and then we lay that new Dara foam, hydrofoam, and then rebar, and then we're gonna be pouring concrete this week, boys. So we didn't get the tin on the roof, so 
there's that big open channel for uh, venting. So we're going to try to pick two days where we're hopefully getting no rain because it still drips in. And uh, if you guys know, as concrete setting, um, if you get drips, they just drill down into the concrete. Every drip drills down in, so it'll kind of ruin your pad. So we're going to have to pick a couple days where it looks like it's going to be nice and clear and then get that concrete to to set up and then and then we'll have no no worries so i believe that he's going to do it in in two two different days two different pours the uh shop area is going to be one pour because that's that's the biggest pad and then we're going to do the uh attached garage living quarters and uh covered patio in a, in another day in another pour so but all of it well not all of it but the detached garage or attached garage and living quarters gets the uh, new dera foam as well because it's heated and then the covered patio um, obviously it's not heated so uh, no no uh, uh, underlaying foam in there so i just want to uh, give a quick another shout out i know i said it before but uh, david clausen builders and fair and square framing um, we basically just did a like a google search of how we kind of wanted this front covered uh little roof to look like and we went and got some roughs on <coughs> excuse me <coughs> corona just kidding we got some roughs on four by sixes and uh and like in a couple hours they freaking whipped up this freaking gorgeous like covered front front entrance so it'll be really nice you could leave your shoes outside we'll pour a decent slab out out here so um you can leave your shoes and crap outside it won't get rained on and then we'll end up just covering this with uh, tongue and groove pine. Some 1x5 or 1x6 tongue and groove pine. We'll put in a couple of nice pot lights. And uh, so, yeah, we just basically wanted something to break up the front. You know, it's such a big, tall wall here. I'm trying to step back just so it kind of breaks it up. And uh, trying to take away some of the kind of industrial look that, you know, this thing could have been looked just like a big kind of pig barn, a big rectangle you know, cause we're doing metal siding and stuff. So we really wanted to kind of make it look a little more homey and not so uh, industrial machinery, machinery building type, if you, know what I, if you know what I'm saying. So there's a couple screw piles here we had to find and mark out um, cause that's where uh, we'll have some uh, posts. We'll have a concrete, uh, form up a concrete, um, not cylinder, but, a square so the bottom part will be concrete where we're going to put uh rock stone on and then this top part uh six feet of it'll be will be these posts they're sitting here so those suckers will go and they'll finish off the look those are just temporary supports for now so those posts will come down there and support that little roof there so all right so we are here at the property and it is power day tomorrow so they're going to trench in electrician and he works for a company here in PA and uh, called Lightway and so these guys are awesome and they came in and brought us in this 400 amp uh, service box so that's awesome so they're gonna transfer in there's the power stake but they said they would like us to move some of this dirt so luckily we have a bobcat thank goodness and uh, man is uh, just moving some dirt here so that they don't have to uh, charge us more money. <laughs> All right, we got a hole where the power can go through. Yay! That is a lot of dirt. You think that you not so much, but it took him probably almost an hour now. Maybe not quite, but been 30 minutes more to move some of the dirt out of the way. But it's looking good. Power's coming through tomorrow. Pretty exciting. But yeah. Come on, you better wheelie that thing higher. <laughs> you know, it just hits the back, you can't wheelie it. Okay. No, man, that one I did there, it went all the way across. 
Yeah, yeah I know. I was like, yeah. One, can't, one can't recreate it. That's a damn fine. Oh, look at this pool. Is that your new pool? You good? I think a loader can get through. All right. Thumbs up. Job well done. That's a hard working, hard working woman right there. Well boys, our driveway troubles are about to be solved, temporarily anyways. We're uh, at Northern Mountain Bridges yard here. We're gonna pick up some rig mats. We'll lay them down in our driveway so it's been raining freaking nonstop and some trucks have had issues. Uh, getting up the driveway, so we'll lay down some freaking mats and we'll have no more troubles. That's perfect right there. Out the way! Okay, these rig mats are gonna be the saving grace of this whole project. Every time! Every time! What? I don't even think of the thing. <laughs> Every time I go to town, boys I'll kick my dog around. There, I remembered. Took me a second. Wee ha! Oh, I think this might be still a little, success. a little sketchy right here. We're just not gonna lie, success. right, Jonathan? Yep. Success. It's gonna be a success. Yes. It is a success. Woohoo! Look at that house. Succeeded. Mission passed. It's not ugly, is it? A couple people said it was ugly. She not ugly. What's ugly? The house. The house? Yeah. We built it. We built a ramp for Jonathan. Oh, from the sun. That's why the geese sit on the highway, man. It's warm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, we it was his idea, not ours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you got sick air. <laughs> I bet you that I bet you that bike has about 70,000 miles on it. Jonathan rips around a lot. Man, look at that beautiful freaking sunset. So it's kind of nice. We're kind of west facing so we get all the cool sunsets. Oh, is he going to do it again? Go, go, go. So Willie and his team are doing a freaking pretty deadly job. They got uh, the living quarters and the attached garage uh, completely prepped. Um, the uh, Nodura foam down, hydrofoam. And then uh, Connor's uh, guy Logan came in um, and they uh, placed the heat lines, um, the glycol lines, PEX pipe, uh, in the living quarters and in the attached garage. So basically all this needs now is rebar and she is ready to pour. So does not look freaking awesome. Beautiful. So yeah, that's gonna be freaking lovely. Just lovely. And then here's the attached garage. We've got a center drain there. So um, it'll be quite a section around here that will have a two inch slope. So everything will drain to that drain. So yeah, basically there'll be a manifold on the wall here. For that one, there'll be a supply line like an inch and a half or inch and five eight supply line that comes from the boiler. The boiler will be in the mechanical room there. So they still got a supply line that has to go there. And then there'll be a manifold here. This will be uh, kind of hidden in a cupboard inside our little office. So this room here, about here is the office. And then that room there is the mechanical room. So the power box and everything will be in here. The boiler will be in here. Bunch of crap will be in here, so it'll be a pretty busy place. Probably uh, water filtration will be in here because this is the well line right here. So the well, it's not dug yet, but it's basically right where that pole is. So it's trenched in, I think we went nine or 10 feet deep. So it comes out right there. Goes way under the footing there. So there'll be some heat trace tape 
as well there because it's not quite nine feet deep under the footing it goes down to nine feet out there so we'll put some heat trace tape on that just so we never ever have to worry about it so yeah things are moving right freaking along man so we'll have a, like a hot sea power wash unit uh just outside the wall this will be like an enclosed uh, enclosed area where the car wash bay is so all the moisture and humidity and everything will stay in that we'll have a big exhaust fan and then up above you still got a really good chunk of room that'll basically be like a second floor with a bunch of storage we'll have some railings up there so there'll be a really good storage up on top of that car wash bay so we'll build that uh, really good with some really thick joists so we can uh, use that top for storage so that'll be kind of double duty you do uh, eat, a, eat out a little bit eat out <laughs> a little bit of your shop by having that car wash bay but it'll be freaking indispensable and we should have enough shop <laughs> we should have enough shop we can we can make racks and stack things four high <laughs> could you imagine x3 quad sled <laughs> oh that'd be cool so jonathan where, where have you been it's been like a week and we haven't seen you i'm not stepping on nothing oh god every Oh, we got a surprise for Jonathan. Does he know what it is? Oh, God, he doesn't even know what it is? I'll tell you. We're giving him an old GoPro so he can film his adventures, but he doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, he'll be pretty pumped for that. So, yeah. Anyways, just quick little video. Sun setting. She's a little late. Well, guys, what do you think? Man, look how awesome this looks. We got all the new Dura foam in today, hydro foam. So we got our levels all correct. So if you can see that line on the concrete, that's how thick the concrete's gonna be. Uh, the heat line's gotta go on tomorrow and the rebar. And then uh, concrete after that. So we got our drains here, all positioned. So we uh, went with a two inch slope, uh, 12 or 14 feet that way. So can park anything in this entire area here and it'll all drain into that drain for there and then that drains for the car wash bay and then here's our pads for our two post lift so another six or eight inches of concrete will go there and obviously no no heat lines right there so we'll have really nice thick freaking pads to put our two post lifts we'll never have any issues with the concrete there so man does it look freaking awesome Oh, looks so cool man progress this stinking weather has been really really hampering us uh, me and mrs Osta went today and picked up another seven rig mats we're gonna lay those down right now so concrete trucks uh won't have trouble coming up the hill tomorrow um so tomorrow hopefully we're gonna pour the living quarters in the attached garage so and then they'll finish this off and then we'll pour this later this week so this will be one big pour that's gonna be a lot of concrete that looks so freaking awesome. So, right on. Morning, guys. Uh, so we got lots happening today. This is the shop area, obviously. Um, so we got all the new Dura Hydro Foam down. Um, the floor uh, or the the dirt all prepped underneath. And so now they're just installing the in-floor heat lines into this new Dura Foam. And uh, Logan's. Uh, hooking up the manifolds um, so that he can air test the lines just to make sure there's no leaks because uh, we should be able to pour the living quarters and the attached garage tomorrow. So he wants to get the manifold hooked up and then put some air to it uh, just to make sure we got no leaks and if there's any leaks, um, now's the time to fix it, right? Not when, <laughs> not when the floor is poured. So we got 15 mil rebar, some crazy heavy duty rebar and everything. So we should have some really nice strong floors. See how we uh, work this rebar here so we can tie these pads together. Right now he's just got them pushed back, but uh, these will come through into the, into the concrete here. So all, these, all the pads will be basically kind of tied together, keep everything from moving. So yeah, this new Dara gives uh, gives little channels uh, for the heat lines for the heat lines to sit in. So you end up with a really really nice installation, and then your rebar goes over top. So your lines are kind of down in in the little kind of 
valleys in between these little knobs. So really, really cool stuff. Much, much easier than working with just plain styrofoam. So here's a shot of, there'll be one manifold here and there'll be one manifold over there. This is a lot of heat lines. I think there's nine zones here. So I'm sure it'll be the same on that side. So there'll be eight, 18 zones in the shop. It's a very, very large shop for us. <laughs> so yeah, that Nudura, uh, you basically just step on the lines and it goes down into the channels. And then they're just using some plastic staples just to make sure everything stays in, in place. Mostly just on the bends, keep those down. Awesome. Uh, I just want to give you like, just a real quick uh, visual of how it kind of interlocks together. Um, these are cut pieces or whatever, but they're still the same. So you have an overlapping edge on them. They fit right in like that. So they tie in nice. And as you can see, the heat lines go down in the channels. So I think it's a really good product. So it gives it gives the installers ease of use. Yeah, and I think it's better R value and it's just a better product. Your heat lines are down in the channel, they're out of the way from getting damaged, like from the rebar, everything else. So really, really cool stuff. Should give us a nice warm floor. <laughs> it's kinda like Lego. Yeah, kinda. My favorite! <laughs> Large Lego. Can we build a house out of Lego? <laughs> Home? It's pretty 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 easy, like you know. Let me break this on you. No. Let me break it on you. Okay. Okay. You ready? The same. Yes. I don't think it's pretty hard. It's gonna hurt. You ready? Yeah. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that really hurt. <laughs> I remember like across the shoulders or something. <laughs> oh, did you hear that sound? Boink! Yeah.